Shalom. Before I begin this video, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rechak Wadash. Also, as well, uh, double honors to the apostles and the others of Great Millstone. They continue to rule very well to this very day. That is continually feeding the flock through the Spirit and power of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai. And I'm also, as well, a uh, Shalom to the whole elect that's continually laboring his work and also do labor to show forth your diligence to make your calling and election sure in faith, in truth, sincerity, and also in all charity. Now, um, the topic of this video is going to be entitled Israel Shall Be Desired. Okay, now, of course, like always, the spirit has it to where I, I change the title of the video, I'm going to change it, but um, you know, it's going to the spirit. You know, concerning uh, the nation of Israel, which consists of you so-called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans, you know, um, our, our people are uh, the least desired amongst all the people on on the planet Earth. Okay, and is uh, is evident <clears throat> that that's uh, that that's the case because these other nations that are here that um, have a, some sort of stake here in uh, Babylon the Great, which is known as America, um, you know, and have their own establishment here and have their own thing set up you know uh, what these nations are, have done throughout the course of history is uh, take advantage of our people and have uh, completely taken advantage of our downfall because you know the, these other nations they understand you know who we are you know they and, and really they 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 know who we are you know everybody else um seems to identify us and to know who we are but yet you know our people to this very day still don't know who they are which you know that's another topic for another video but you know concerning other nations and them taking advantage of us you know they what they do is you know they even know you know they uh further the affliction of our people pursuant to the precepts uh pursuant to the scriptures where it speaks about that these other nations you know they uh what they do is, you know, we, we the scriptures deem our people as as uh, the salt, you know, because well, we are the salt of the earth. You know, we we give the earth flavor, and what you see these other nations, you know, uh, try to copy what we do. You know, uh, also uh, try to to copy our attire. You know, how we walk, how we carry ourselves, but yet on the other end, you know, even though they do that. They still look at our, our people as, as nothing, man. They still look at our people as, as the bottom of the barrel, you know? And, and that's why the, the Lord is going to bring down heavy judgment against these other nations, man. That, that's, why they, that's why they're going into captivity. That's, that's the reason why they're going to they're gonna face harsh judgment at the hands of Yahweh Shemel all Shai. All right? And that's one of many reasons why uh, the Lord is going to do this. Okay? But, you know, them... You know, taking advantage of our people and our people being uh, downtrodden and still to this very day being oppressed. You know, our people are are, are, are looked at as 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 we, our people are still considered uh, three fifths of men. You know, that that ideology still hasn't hasn't disappeared. Okay, and we know that because this man, the so-called white man, which his true biblical nationality is Esau Edom. You know, he. Uh, still continues to try to destroy our people all right but yeah even in the midst of all of this our people still shine in a way you know because they still uh outdo the other nations concern concerning other areas of life all right but all this is happening right now as i'm speaking you know this year being 2021 uh the year of hastening so the Lord is going to make Israel beautiful again, you know, because our, our, our people were des desired during the time, you know, and that was during the time of the reign, uh, starting with the reign of uh, King Solomon. All right. Because during the reign of King Solomon, if you read about it, uh, Solomon's servants, you know, when uh, the queen, I believe is the queen of Sheba, if I'm not mistaken, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, the queen of Sheba or, or Queen Candace, either one of the two. I believe the scriptures mentioned Queen Candace, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but the queen basically made a journey to, to, uh, to, to just to hear the wisdom of King Solomon and mistaken 
mistaken King Solomon for being one of his servants. You know, his servants were so decked out that she thought that the, the servant was King Solomon. You know, one of the servants was King Solomon, you know? And that's how beautiful our people were, okay? But due to our people, you know, uh, disregarding the words of Yahweh by Shimon Shai and not taking heed to uh, his words, and we went from beautiful to downtrodden. You know, we went from from, from beauty to, to something that is uh, detested, all right? Something that's abhorred, okay? And see, now the Lord, once again, is uh, making Israel beautiful again, all right? So I'm going to go ahead and hop into the precepts I have here. So it's the book of Isaiah, chapter 62. And it's at verse, uh, verse one. All right. Come on. Let's lock it. It's the book of Isaiah, chapter 62, uh, verse one. It says, for Zion's sake, will I not hold my peace? And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until the righteousness thereof go forth as brightness and the salvation thereof as a lamp that burneth. All right. So this is the Lord speaking, man. The Lord said he's not going to hold his peace. For Jerusalem's sake, he's not going to rest. All right? Until righteousness go forth. All right? And salvation as a lamp. All right, verse 2, it says, And the Gentiles shall see thy righteousness, and all the kings thy glory. And thou shalt be called by a new name, which the mouth of the Lord, Yahweh Bashmel Shah, shall name. Thou shalt also be a crown of glory in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of thy power. I believe diadem goes back to, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it does, it's dealing with uh, uh, agriculture. But I, I'm, you know what, let me go ahead and hop, hop into the other word, diadem, uh, to get edification on that word. I looked up the word diadem before. I think this might be it. Uh, let's see. Yes, it is. Yep. Okay, so this is the word. Okay, so I was I was wrong. It's lucky. Um, so that word uh, diadem is a uh, taza 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 na ya. All right, uh, Tazar Nayak, which means uh, turban, headdress, okay, uh, Amitri, okay, and the scripture is actually going to, uh, I believe it's in, uh, I believe it's in Zachariah, if I'm not mistaken, where it speaks about, um, where it speaks about Joshua. Now, um, I might. I might not be quoting uh, the scripture correctly, but uh, it speaks about uh, Joshua and um, exchanging the rags that Joshua had in exchange for a beautiful garment and a mitri. All right, which we already know what that scripture is going into, you know, because the apostle elder is always quoted um, time and time again. But um, again, you know, going back to this word. Uh, Mitri or, or uh, Taza, Taza Nayap, which means uh, me, a turban or a headdress, all right, uh, a Mitri or a hood, all right, a headdress, a uh, piece of cloth wrapped around, right? So it literally means uh, Mitri, okay? So uh, let me go back. All right, verse 3 it says, Thou shalt be called a crown of glory in the hand of the Lord, Yahweh Bashmel Shai, and a royal diadem in the hand of thy power. Thou shalt no more be turned, and that's the, that's the point. Uh, thou shalt no more be turned forsaken, neither shall thy land any more be turned desolate. All right? And which really, that's uh, talking about us, because the nation of Israel is a people before it's a place. All right? So what it's saying here is that our people are no longer going to be turned forsaken nor desolate because 
you know, and that's really what these people, you know, that's one of the arguments that they come up with when they're trying to put forth the, this uh, modern day Christianity is that the Lord forsook the nation of Israel and uh, cast us away, you know? But when you read in the scriptures, especially in the New Testament, which they like to uh, quote from, uh, it tells you that the nation of Israel has not been forsaken, all right? And the Lord has not cast away his people. And the apostle Paul was the one who, who, uh, who, who said that. All right. In the book of uh, Romans. Okay. The Lord has not cast away his people. All right. Now that we know that, well, I'm reading uh, uh, a part of the prophecy. All right. Where the Lord is, uh, again, where the Lord is going to make our nation, our people, beautiful once again. All right. He's going to beautify the nation of Israel once again. Okay. So I'm reading from the top of verse 4 again. It says, Thou shalt no more be turned forsaken, neither shall thy land any more be turned desolate. But thou shalt be called uh, Hef, Hef Zabah, and thy land uh, Beulah. All right, which uh, in the Hebrew is uh, Beulah, uh, if I'm not mistaken. For the Lord, Yahweh Bashmiel Shai, delighteth in thee, and thy land shall be married. Okay? Now, um, before before I uh, turn the turn the video on, uh, I looked up both those words, uh, hef hef zaba, and uh, 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 beila. All right, and it, it literally tells you in the next sentence what those two words mean, because uh, hef hef zaba means uh, to be delighted in. Okay, and uh, beula, which is uh, beila, means uh, married. All right. And marriage, you know, like we always going to uh, marriage is a, a, a joining of uh, two uh, of two. Well, normally, when you deal with marriage is a joining of two two houses. All right. Or uh, two entities. Uh, case in point, um, you know, you have your your your, your conventional marriage. You know, you have uh, two people, you know, you have a man and a woman come together. But uh, marriage can marriage simply means to be joined together so you can also have two two entities come together like case in point um when you have two companies um one company can join with another company and and and, and they can be married with each other to make this one uh, big company okay and, and rebrand all right so same thing with the nation the, the relationship between the nation of israel and yahweh through his son yahweh shai Okay, because to be married is to be joined, to be joined together. All right, and that's why uh, we, the nation of Israel, is joined together by way of by way of uh, of the uh, the covenant that was given. All right, because th this covenant that was given was given only to the nation of Israel. All right, and through that, that that's a binding contract. All right, which binds the nation of Israel with Yahweh through His Son Yahweh Shai. Okay, so therefore, you know, the Lord, once again, like it says here, we're going to be no more turned forsaken nor desolate, but we're going to be uh, turned a, a delight and also be married. Okay. And again, remember, you know, the nation of Israel is a people before it's a place. So the nation of Israel is going to be married to the Lord once again. All right. Uh, verse five, it says, for as a young man. Marrieth a virgin, uh, so shall thy sons marry thee. And as the bridegroom rejoiceth over the bride, so shall thy power rejoice over thee. See, and this is just a, another nail that that's fastened to the point that we are to be joined back with Yahweh by Shmuel Shai. All right, and, we, and you're seeing that process right now because before the marriage even commences. You know, there's preparations that's got to be done first. All right. The bride has to get herself ready. All right. For for the marriage ceremony. All right. And the bridegroom is, is waiting, waiting on the bride. All right. But in this case, you know, we're waiting on you. How about Shmuel Shai? All right. In in the middle, middle of that. All right. Like it says in the scriptures uh, and, and your patience possess ye your souls. 
So while we're waiting on Yahweh Bashmi on Shai, that's what we're doing. We're possessing our souls. We're, we're preparing ourselves. All right? We're preparing ourselves in the spirit for the return of our Lord, Yahweh Bashmi on Shai. All right? And it's going to be a dramatic return. All right? Same thing with, with, with our marriage. You know, a marriage ceremony is dramatic. Okay? It's always dramatic. So with this, that's, that's about to happen, was about to take place, it's also going to be dramatic. All right? So I'll move on from there. Um, book of Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 14, it says, Turn, O backsliding children. All right, talking about the nation of Israel. Say of the Lord, for I am married unto you. All right, the, the Lord is joined unto us. All right? So that's why the Lord is so adamant about the nation of Israel returning back to him. All right? And turn away from, from our backsliders. Okay? Because, um, you know, the Lord is married to us, and it, and it tells you as well that, um, actually, let me see if I can get it, because the, the, the husband man is very much alive, all right? Because when, normally when you have the hu the husband uh, die, all right, that, that, that woman is uh, become widowed. Uh, let me see if I can um, grab a piece of, which, I'm, which I got in mind, a sloggy while I try to get it. It's like it. It's better. It speaks about if the bride, if the bridegroom is still living, then uh, the, the bride is still uh, the bride is still attached, for lack of a better term, to the the husband as long as he liveth. All right. And um, let's see if I can find it. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and um, see verse 39 it says the wife is bound by the law as long as her husband liveth but if her husband be dead she is at liberty to be married to whom she will only in the Lord alright and I believe this is it uh, it's like you I believe there's another one. This might be it. Uh, let me keep looking. Uh, okay, yeah, I believe that's it right here. It's like it. Uh, Romans chapter 7. And, um, let's see. Uh, yeah, you know what? Let me, uh, yeah, let me start at verse 2. Uh, uh, Romans chapter 7, verse 2. It says, For the woman which hath an husband is bound by the law to her husband so long as he liveth. But if the husband be dead, she is loose from the law of her husband. So then if, while her husband liveth, she be married to another man, she shall be called an adulteress. And, and you see that today. All right? Because our people are married to the Lord, but yet they are joining themselves and they are marrying off to another, another man. All right? And they're doing that by way of uh, subscribing to this uh, American doctrine. All right? You know, the American way of life. This this uh this Babylonian way of life, should I say? Okay, and they're uh, they are committing adultery against Yahweh Bashmi on Shai by doing that. Okay, because this land Babylon the Great, the doctrine which is pushed here, is of an is of another uh, another entity. You know, which is not of Yahweh Bashmi on Shai. Okay, uh, read on. It says, uh, but if her husband be dead, she is free from that law so that she is no adulteress all right uh though she be married to another man all right so if she was married to another man while the husband is not living then um then yeah uh she should she's not calling adulteress but since the husband is still alive which is who yeah how about shmiel shai so as long as the husband is still alive all right we are still joined unto that husband all right by way of the law, all right? And that's the, uh, the covenant, all right? That's the agreement, okay? Um, let's see, it's locked here. Yeah, so that's that's it on that. Yeah, that's it on that point. And I believe that's also it for this lesson, this video. But um, yeah, like I said earlier at the beginning of the video, um, is that, you know, we, 
we are still joined to Yahweh by Shimon Shai. So therefore, the Lord is going to resurrect the nation of Israel, all right, and be and bring us back by way of the marriage supper, okay? And the Lord is going to beautify his people once again, okay? And when that take place, you know, we're going to be desired once again. It tells you also, it's another uh, precept that tells you that to rise up, old nation not desired. Okay? Which, you know, drives on the point that our, our, our people are the least desired in this society today. All right? But through Yahweh Bashem El Shai and the power that he's going to give us, all right, we're going to be desired once again. All right? The, the, you know, these other nations, they're going to uh, follow after what the, the, the law says, commandments that we're going to enforce. All right? And, um, the, the planet Earth is going to be at rest once again, and everything is going to be back in its, in its proper order. Okay, but I'm gonna go ahead and end off on that note. Uh, Lord's will to Yahweh, by Shem Shai, by Shem and our double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone everywhere to this day, and also our Shalom, peace and safety, salutations to the whole elect as I continue to labor in this work and labor to show forth your diligence to make a calling and lecture sure in faith, truth, and sincerity, and also in our charity. And with that, we're gonna say Shalom.